Right, so we have the next base dash camera, which, well, it's supposed to be quite of a good thing. I've seen some videos on YouTube with somebody that actually uh, used it for a couple of times and the quality in this one is quite good. So uh, the full kit includes dash camera, the one that's gonna be fitted here, which is gonna also record everything that's in front of the car. Then we have the rear window camera that's gonna be on the back of the car. And also we have the dash cam hardware kit, which these ones actually, they are going to be, <clears throat> we're going to uh, take the power from a fuse uh, of the car directly. So we don't have any kind of wires in here. And we also we got a SanDisk SD, a micro SD card, 64 gigabytes. Uh, we got it actually half price. So everything we got from Halfords, uh, and it was 229 pounds. Let's just call it 230 pounds. I'm quite happy with the price, but I'm very interested to see what's gonna be the actual result and how it's going to look like. And how are we, how are we gonna start Let's unbox first the main camera. Open the seal. So guys, if the seal is already open, well, just ask for another one because there is no there is no reason for you to actually use one that you know was already used. Let's see, next base dash cams. Congratulations on the purchase of your next base dash cam. This easily peel sticker is designed to be re to be placed in your rear or side window, we suggest you to not place the... Oh, this is interesting. So you can actually put it on the car. <laughs> so people know that you are covered. Okay, this will be interesting. I don't know if I'm actually going to put it, but it's quite interesting. Let's see. So we have the sticker, not for now. Thank you for purchasing this next base dash cam. To get the very best from your next base dash cam, please check for the whatever former version. Blah blah blah, not interested. And we have in Spanish, French, Deutsche Nazione. Okay, the quick start guide. It's a micro SD card. Alright. Remove cover. Rotate cable and connect power. This is interesting. So you have a step-by-step -step process on how to do everything. So we have from one, and it goes up to number eight. And in multiple languages. I mean, makes sense the first one, it's in English. Let's see what we have here. Oh, more steps. So you do have a step-by-step -step process on how you can do everything. Also, you do have Alexa incorporated, so you will be able to give them commands directly. So you can, you know, command the camera to do different stuff, uh, like stop recording, start recording, and stuff like that. Let's see what's next. <clears throat> so this is the power cable. Right, so this one is if you actually charge it at the socket in the car, which are this special, it's here. But being very honest with you guys, it's gonna be too much wire. So uh, that's the reason I got this, which is the hardware kit. But anyway, we're gonna get back later to this one. Let's see what we have next. Right, this is like the holder make sense and what is this what are these stuff man oh so this thingy most probably is for you to be able to hide the cables okay this is smart i give you that and we have the camera next base camera yeah 140 degrees angle so it's more than the samsung phone <laughs> Okay, what is this? Made in China, of course. Right, okay, this kind of makes sense now. Let's see. How are we going to fit this one? Oh. It's magnetic, guys. Holy moly. Okay, how... Okay, it's stuck. So, I guess... Yes, and this is the power cable. Fit it in. 
we have two types of folders. If just the, the, the initial position if is not enough, you can use this one. So how you can take it out, you keep these two fingers here, one at each side, in which, each, each corner, and then just push. Take it off. And just put the new one. Which the new one works the same. So you have these three pins, one, two, three pins. Yeah, and you need to fit them here. These three holes, yeah. You fit them and then and that's it. Job's done, magic happened. And if we're gonna put it like this. Alright, job's done. Maybe we will be able to fit this one somewhere like this. All right. So the cable maybe will be able to somehow fit it like this. But yeah, that's gonna be another story. Uh, micro SD card. Where is the micro SD card? I have this on this micro SD card. We also have an adapter so you can uh, fit it directly in the computer. Because most of them nowadays they have like SD cards readers. And this is the micro SD card. I'm just curious, on the camera, is it a micro SD card? Right, so the micro SD card should go... And it's recording! Right, so we have the rear window camera. So this camera, through a long wire, 6.5 meters, will get connected on this side. On this side of the camera. We'll get connected in here. Right, and we'll be able to see and record what's happening in the back of the car. Okay, this is a long cable, mate. This is such a long cable. So, this is the back camera. Wow. Wow. This is high tech, mate. This is a magnet. It's actually nothing keeping it here, it's just a magnet. It's gonna be something like this. Good stuff. And then we have the actual cable 6.5 meters here and you can connect it here. And after that, once you're going to have it connected here, you'll take this bit plug it in here it will be like this get it closer to the camera get it closer so everybody can see what we see so this is what we see with the back camera right well this is supposed to film in the back of the car anyway so pretty much that's about it now what we need to do <laughs> will be to find a way to hide all of these cables. I mean, guys, look at this, right? Look at this cable. And for doing that, we're going to have this one. So it is recommended for normal journey video recording. The hardware kit is connected to a switch power supply. This means the power is supplied to the dash camera only when the vehicle's ignition is turned on. Safety notes, perform the installation with the ignition in the off position. Well. Do not strip any live wires. Correct electrical polarity and grounding is required for safe and proper installation. Only connect to a negative ground DC supply circuit. Not for installation to positive ground circuit. In the passenger compartment, but it may be in the engine bay. Typically, there will be a... So, we have the cable. Then we have... What is this? <laughs> the cable. <laughs> This requires an electrician, honestly. And... Don't even know what this is. The fuse box, I have the Peugeot 2008. It's here. Just... Remove this one. Yeah. You also have a fuse remover. And... We have all these cables here. Oh my god, this is such a mess. Let me show you how many cables it's in here, guys. Quite of a uh, 
crowded spot to be honest with you I think it's the most crowded huge box I ever seen so far but yeah it is what it is now we'll need to find a way to take the wire from here this wire and this wire and take it up here and then all the way down here and then somewhere in here under the dashboard somehow under the dashboard directly so we can get to the fuse box this is gonna be for the power cable so we can use it there and fit it somewhere in there in one of the fuse boxes in there right now after we do that at the same time we also need to take the cable from here which is gonna be the cable from the from this thin tiny camera from the back camera right and then we have to take it somewhere in here like this I think under this thingy and just all the way till there which is gonna be so fun so many hours so we have the hard wire and we managed to find the spot so we can take it out from the fuses boxes from here so we can take it out so we can after that all the way and connect it to the camera so what we did so we remove this one yeah so we can have enough space in here so we can have enough space in here right and is through here so you do have a spot I don't know if you guys will be able to see it you do have a spot in here in which you can just slide it in and you can actually see my finger see So you can actually see the finger in here, yeah? And you can just go through with the cable so you can after that take it out. And we have the blue LED in here saying that it's actually charging, which is good. And this one totally agrees with us, it's actually charging. So we have the wire, the cable that's for the camera, let's feed it through here, then all this way, if you can see it here, yeah, it's all this way, till this side, and we have this 
left over in here that we are just going to fit it somewhere in there. Then we fit it through this one, so it's gonna be waterproof. Yeah, we're going to fit it back. It goes all this way here, following the little fuse for uh, the windscreen, and it's gonna be something like this. We have the dash cam here, uh, we took it back in the house so we can charge it. It actually says in the manual that you are supposed to um, charge it for about two hours before uh, putting it in a car, you know, first time, first time usage. Uh, I just want to double check the settings in here with you guys. Let's see, video settings, I have the resolution, yeah, so you can select the resolution and also how many frames per second. Now, um, as far as I, un I understood, uh, it kind of makes sense <clears throat> to keep the settings with 180p yeah, pixels with 60 frames per second. Why? Because if you'll not need to, uh, you know, slow motion a little bit, you'll definitely be able to do that and the experience is going to be different in the meaning of the more frames per second you have in a video and uh, when you're going to uh, you know uh, do like a slow-mo so you can let's say uh, find a number plate of a car that hit you and stuff like that it definitely helps a lot let's see the exposure is the light which is going to leave it to zero video length now uh, with the video length you choose uh, each video how many minutes to have it's either one minute, two minutes, or three minutes. I choose to uh, to have it on three minutes because uh, it, it kind of makes sense. That there is no point in having just one minute, or one minute recordings. It's too much. Audio, it's on. Very good to have it on. You know, just in case. Let's see, timestamp. So it's gonna put the time in there, which again is very good for the insurance company because they will be able to have the actual uh, time when you're going to send the footage as an. Uh, as a proof speed stamp also good yeah very good to have the speed stamp uh, because if you're not a crazy driver and uh, uh, over speed uh, it's a good thing and the GPS stamp so it's gonna say pretty much where you are um, model stamp yes so it's gonna be the model of the camera that was used again which is very good that's gonna be a proof of the fact that you you use the camera that you have um, number plates, so you can put the number plates, but I, I don't really, I don't really feel if you know, like that's actually something quite, uh, uh, quite useful. Uh, time lapse. I don't even know what time lapse is, uh, but yeah, it's gonna be interesting, I guess. G sensor, very important with the G sensor. G sensor is uh, the motion. So when you have the car parked, yeah, if by any chance something is gonna hit your car, it's gonna move the car, yeah. Um, the camera is gonna start uh, filming. Let's see. Most probably because you are in settings. We're going to do a test. Let's say. Okay. Let's get out of this one and let's see. Now this is from the video settings, yeah? Quite a few things. Now let's go back and let's go to driver assistance. Uh, so you either emergency SOS or uh, reversing camera. Well, the reversing camera is not connecting now, but it, it kind of makes sense. It's self-explanatory. It will uh, show you the uh, the reverse camera. It's gonna help out in parking. You don't have some sort of sensors account. Uh, if you're going to use Alexa, well, you're pretty much going to order the uh, the camera different things. So has a let, uh, Alexa built in, which might be quite of a good feature for some of uh, uh, us. 
Uh, I personally, I'm not using Alexa each time I, uh, you know, I get in my car, I'm just connecting it uh, via Android Play, so Google is doing everything. Uh, my next base, my next base is this, is the app on the phone. Uh, the app on the phone, you can download it from iOS or uh, Android. It's free, of course it's free, it kind of makes sense, I mean you're paying a fortune uh, for this one. Uh, in the app itself you don't have that many things, uh, live view it's available, let's see if it's gonna show live. It should work, it worked, I tried it twice, <laughs> it worked. <clears throat> yes, and it works. Uh, let's see. Hey. Yes, guys, yes. So it works, you can do a live view. This is mind blowing. Yeah, well, at least we know that the live view is working, which is good. Uh, you can check what's happening in the car. Um, let's see what other things we have in here. Uh, the firmware, so you can actually, uh, if it's not updated, it shows in here too. Updated dash cam, you can see the the videos which were recorded. Quite a few videos. So yeah, there you have it. Well, it it, it kind of makes sense that it needs a little bit of time, and let's try and play a video. videos so you can actually see the videos let's see connect dash cam emergency SOS the Alexa incident aware uh, in here actually uh, you are actually able to uh, select an email address where the uh, footage of uh, uh, an incident is going to be sent out so you can directly send out like to a friend or to, to your insurer you know in case by any chance you won't be able to do that uh, so yeah it, it's quite of an interesting thing to be honest with you if you want you can enable it from here just swipe like this and job's gonna get done